November the 4th at Onjeni area of Umzigo district which is under Kuzia team communal health and started started school at Onjeni primary school up to standard 3 then moved over to Mzinyati primary Mzinyati mission then for standard 3 again because they couldn't get places for vacancy for standard 4 so I went back another year to standard 3 in Mzinyati mission up to standard 6 and left Mzinyati in 1967 My third year doing Form 3, I left school because of financial challenges. I could raise money for school. Okay. It was myself, my brother, and my elder brother. Other elder brother was now at Fletcher, and my sister, uh, who comes after me, was at Mzinyatin Secondary School at the time. So the old men couldn't afford fees for four uh, secondary school going children at the same time. Yes. So we all dropped out of school. Uh, in my case, I was doing Form 3. Yeah. Uh, which year? Huh? Yeah. That was 1970. 1970. Yeah, that's, that's when I left school. Uh, I then came to Blauer. Mm -hmm. uh, it was temporary work from one company to the other until 1971. Yes. Where I got uh, a job at Super Sony, company. Initially, as a line operator, uh, with time, I think 1972, the line fault inspector working under the likes of uh, Chief Nchani Kumar. Mm -hmm. Chief Nchani Kumar was the head of all inspectors. It's supposed to be the What does that involve? Line, line, uh, line. radio manufacturing. Right. Line, yeah. Mm -hmm. We're inspecting components right. uh, that would uh, put together on a panel yes. and then we'll be inspecting the correctness of the fittings and the correctness of the actual components yeah. and then that there were no faults yeah. and the Kumalo was in charge of the final rating inspections yeah. but we're all falling under him. Yeah. My immediate boss then was uh, Mr. George Moyes, he's still alive, he's in Kovanan, I think. Yeah. Uh, he was my immediate boss. Yeah. But uh, I, I, I worked there until I left Spasone in 1975. Then joined Premier Electric, which was also doing radio manufacturing. Mm. We were doing uh, Tempest and uh, I can't remember which other types of Marilyn radios. Mm. So I worked with, for them until 1977 uh, when they, I was actually fired from Premier Electric mm -hmm. for influencing people to join the liberation stream. Mm -hmm. I had been very active at the time. Right. Because I had been to detention, come back, mm. and the whites were very, very conscious about my activities. Mm. So they didn't want me to be seen talking to anyone. Mm. So even uh, at the production line where I was working, and a man called Julius, he would come and watch over to see if I wasn't talking to him. So I was not allowed to talk to anybody throughout the working day. Mm. And I would only be allowed to talk uh, at, uh, at lunchtime or bedtime. time. Mm. Even the termination of the services, I was not told until about uh, the dismissal time on a Friday when we're getting my pay packet. I just saw on the internet that uh, that was my final pay packet. He didn't have the guts to approach me because he thought maybe I was going to <coughs> So uh, that's how I left the Premier League. That's how I left employed in this. That was the uh, which month? 1977? That was around about May 1977. May 1977. <coughs> Um, but uh, I've been actively involved in politics. My political life starts when I was a young man, very, very, very young, uh, around about 1959. I think I must have been My father was an active member of uh, NDP and also ZAP. So each time he attended ZAP meetings or NDP meetings, he would never miss an opportunity to tell us about ZAP. What was the name of the family? Kulempov. Kulempov. Yes. He, was, he would never miss a, an opportunity. And even uh, 
we got to know where he was hiding his cards after <coughs> support span. So each time we had time with my brothers, we'd sneak in and, and look at the cards and admire the picture of Joshua and Komo. And, and, and that really had a, a motivating or inspiring influence mm. on us as people. That was before I went to Mzimbani. Mm. My elder brother, who, who was uh, four years older than me, but he's late now, just like my son, was a senior at Mzimbani when, when he went there. It was myself and my brother that I come after. He knocked my son. He, he had been active and he had been arrested during soon after the declaration of UDI in 1965. Mzimbani secondary school boys marched from Mzimbani and they were arrested when our 20 kilometers away from Mlawani, coming to protest the UTI. So when we got to Mzingwani, we found it a very, already a very fertile place for politics. It was political activism by the seniors. And uh, we all got entangled and excited about the involvement. Uh, during the Tiger and Fearless talks that uh, the Smith was having with the British, who would pay particular interest in keen attention. And the elder guys would come and politicize us trying to tell us what legs we're trying to do. And that really fell on fatal ground because already I had uh, an understanding of what Joshua Kong was about. Uh, in 1971 when I joined Spurson, I found uh, that I was discriminated upon in several others, uh, people of my age, with good qualifications, were intelligent, because uh, it was when I passed very well, mm -hmm. I think I had seven distinctions at Form 2, but I couldn't proceed because of financial challenges. There we found white young men of our age supervising us because they were the color of their skins. But we were black. Um, I was one of the few, in fact I was the only one, who with Form 2 I was allowed to go to Bulawayo Technical College. Was very technical college then to do an apprenticeship because I was understanding science. They, they gave me an aptitude test and I passed. Mm -hmm. The other guys would be all level passed, all level passed. But I was the only one formed to, and I was allowed to do that course, radio and service in theory and practice, which I passed though, by the way. At Blair Polytech, I was doing an apprenticeship. Mm -hmm. So these young men were together at Polytech. I would do better than them at school, at mm -hmm. college. And I was doing better than, than them at, at work, mm. but still they were my supervisors. The only qualification was the color of their skin. Mm. And that radicalized me. Uh, I would start uh, questioning them. Says, why are you a, 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 a supervisor? Why are you a over me when I'm more intelligent than you, when I can do better than you? Mm. Uh, with the influence of the other workers, uh, supersonic workers engaged in various or illegal strikes, but there were strikes in mm -hmm. prosperity activity, and that also had a, an influence on my politicalization. And then in 1971, or 72 rather, during the PS Commission, by accident, just coincidence, I was living with a family in Chavala, in Lodgewas, specifically Krema Mlojwa, Mofat Mlojwa, Florin Mlojwa, she's in the UK now, but the others are eight. One died in the UK, the other one died soon after. Their father was my husband. He used to listen to the radio Sunday, and they would, uh, in that broadcast, they would hear what people out there in, in Zambia were doing in the liberation struggle. His father was already outside, outside the country. Then one day he invited me for a meeting where there was, uh, Zore was coming, went there, Zore was the president of the, the African National Conference, yes. conference, and he was leading the resistance against the PS commission, commission yeah. so campaigning for a no vote, together with uh, the late President Banana. So I started attending those meetings. There were no sub structures, even PCC structures, even UNC structures. But by, the, by 1970, end of 72, some structures formed. Uh, there was the branch level structures and district level structures, which 
today would be equivalent to provincial structures mm. because it was covering the entire the yeah, yeah. Yes. So I was um, elected or co-opted or nominated vice chairman of the youth in Chavalala branch mm -hmm. at the time 1972 mm. And uh, with time, uh, I became the substantive chairman okay. of, the, of the youth branch in Chavalala. So you were working with who are the others? The ones that I remember that I even went to jail with, uh, there was Elijah Moyo, Elijah Coco Moyo. I remember those vividly because we spent some time together in great prison. There was Sabata Svanda, there was Ernest Nube is late now. Sorry, Elliot Nube is late now. Ernest Nube is alive, he's in, in Caesar. He's a member of the NCA in, 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 in ZANPF, in Ernest Nube. Yeah. And then there was Mofat Kumalo, there was Onias Moyo. Um, I think there were seven of us, but the, uh, the, 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 the one guy that was also very active was Adele. He left in 1975. Uh, he was the first to, to leave for the liberation struggle. Uh, 1975. I can't remember his first name. But he was called the Hattori, but he passed on in Zambia. He was in Tanzania before he got there. He left with a group of other colleagues of mine that uh, were working at Supersonic. The likes of uh, Oman Devu, the likes of Unaison, they were all inspectors, these guys. Mm -hmm. We were working together at Supersonic. All of the guys that were better recognized than us. They left earlier with, together with Hattori. Uh, we followed later on. But in 1975, there about, we, there was violence after the release of the national leaders. ZAPU, ZANU, and UANC became distinct. It's the, it's the outfit. We went for ZAPU. Some, some of the guys that were in Chavalana. Chavalana was a, a very mixed uh, township. There were people from all over. All over the country and outside even Zambia. Because the chairman of the district, Bulawayo, the whole of Bulawayo, was uh, Patrick Chiwanga, he was from Zambia. But then with Nelson Stanini was uh, was once a mayor here. Mm -hmm. He was from Cholojo, he was the vice. Mm -hmm. Then with Opili Chuma. There were so many people from different parts of the country. Mm -hmm. And with Wanaloid Matiladondo, who was also in our branch. Some moved over to UNC, some of moved over to Zan, and ah, there was tension. Mm. There was a lot of tension from 1974 to the release of uh, the nationalists in, in prison. Before 1974, there was just tranquility. We were working well as a team. Uh, yes, nationalists. Yes, nationalists. All of us were, were, were the same objective. Mm. But after 1975, we started identifying with nationalists. The running story was the main purpose, I must say. Because he would come uh, without other nationalists to Chavalala. But, but because they knew that Chavalala was very empty. He would come to Chavalala and then at start a test meeting, leaving some, some of us out. Without him, 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 you know. And then, him, him, him. as a result, they came to the rotation and there was violence. The one of our seniors at Chavalala, he was the vice chairman of the main wing. He was an inspector at ZOC, uh, ROC then. He, uh, he was killed. During the... Uh, yeah, the, 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 those disturbances. Ah, and then there was retaliation. Retaliation from both sides. Mm. Uh, after after the death of Nube, some five guys from ZAN uh, then were, were pro the running story. And uh, from our side, there were seven of us were picked. But those were actually picked for murder, the five. Okay. For us, we were actually picked for public violence. Uh, for the first 37 days, we were in detention, isolated places. Uh, I was at the Rose Camp for most of the time. Others were at Matopo, others were at the Desco team. We were detained initially together with Richard Isof, a member of the youth of yes. Yes. yes, because he was in the district the likes of uh, o, o, o Joseph Malunga, the likes of Johnson Mkanji, uh, the likes of uh, Edison Mube, uh, 
the likes of uh, Daud Mabusa, uh, the likes of uh, who, uh, there were many other nationalists that, that they were on the and so forth that they were doing. But Richard, because he was resident in Chavadale, uh, he was picked along with us. And uh, he spent uh, almost like a similar number of days, about 37, 40 days in detention. But uh, when we first no, Richard, Richard, Richard didn't spend 37 years. He must have been released much earlier. Mm. But uh, eventually, seven of us were charged with We were then transferred to Grey Street Prison, where we spent another six months in detention. Mm. We were being remanded going to prison. We didn't have a lawyer. Um, Zapu couldn't afford That was 1975. Yeah, it was around about the 17th of October, 1975. We were only released in May 2022, 1976. Yeah, that's when we were released. Uh, we are quitted. We are not just released for it, yeah, because we were going to court, uh, but eventually we are quitted for public violence. Uh, and then we were immediately released. That made us heroes, kind of. Yeah. And when we came back to Chawalala, the youth had transformed immensely. They were now militant, they were now ready to go to the liberation strike, men of them, and the men of them left. Mm. Uh, I know people like uh, Wanda Pambano, who was in that during the attacks in Zambia. <coughs> they immediately left. He was one of the bravest fighters in Zambia. Mm. Uh, the commander of Blair District currently, uh, Kennel Mandi. She was one of the youth. She was a 16 year old. Oh, yeah. But when he came back, they were so radicalized. These were youngsters that were now coming up to our ranks. Mm. The numbers had swelled. Uh, she, she was one of the most radical mm. girls at the time. She, she wouldn't tolerate any boy mm. discussing course, yeah. any proposal for anything. Mm -hmm. She was only interested in somebody to show her how to go to Zambia. Mm. Until we did. Mm. Until we found a way to get her to Zambia. Mm. Uh, early 1977. She, she was very active and uh, well politicized and they were campaigning. They were, were at the time we used to go door to door. To. There's not a single house in Chavalala that I didn't enter mm. when we were campaigning. Even those where, where we knew there were hostilities, we still would end. And that youth were there. And uh, even on violence, we were now on top of the situation. Our guys would uh, really deal with any uh, kind of uh, incident that, that, that arose. So, with that in mind, we were we, we, we receiving a lot of uh, requests for questions about how to get to Zambia. Mm. Now nobody knew uh, how to deal with it. Zapu had deployed a mission to Zerabinube to the Mahonvo office. Mm. We didn't know that mission to Zerabinube was trained. And occasionally I would go to my own office to Yepopo, yeah, yes. I would go to relieve uh, certain uh, Wilson. Wilson Moyo is now under ZAP, but he was the Makwekwe chairman of the group. So I would go and relieve him there. They would ask the party would ask.